Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. Great. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. The city of His holiness. Praise the Lord. Greetings, my dear brethren, and welcome to our teleconference another time. We are here to give glory to God, to give thanks unto Him, and to bless His holy name. Our God truly is a great God, and truly is a holy God, a righteous God, a loving God. And, you know, we should always be grateful to Him. No matter what comes up against us, we should give Him praise, because He loves us more than we can imagine with great compassion and love and mercies he show up upon us every day so today we want to give god thanks and we want to give him praise so thank god that we are here again on this teleconference and um, we are going to continue our our lessons and um, be of good courage be of good courage and um but before I do, let me have a short prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you for everyone that's joined this teleconference. I pray you will guide us. I pray you will be with us. I pray you inspire us, Lord, with your word. I pray your blessings will be upon us and that you let your presence keep us and go before us and guide us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and honor that's due unto your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And amen. So we are going to continue. This is the last part of um, our uh, message and about being of good courage. It's very important that God wants His people, our, us, His people, to be courageous, courageous. And um, looking through the Scripture, everyone that God called are used. They had courage. You know, they were able to battle with fear. They were able to overcome fear with faith. Faith overcomes fear. And um, we began, and we first part, we talk about Moses and how Moses took courage and stood before Pharaoh as God appointed him to do. And we see what God, how God used fear. Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. I think it says over a million of the children of Israel he led out of Egypt, out into towards the promised land. They didn't enter the promised land because of their hardness of their heart, so to speak. And in part two we spoke about Joshua and Caleb and just a recap in on Joshua and Caleb, how Joshua and Caleb was the two men who were not afraid to go up against the the countries that they were to pass through to get to the Ken, to, to the promised land. They were fearless. They believed God was able to deliver them and they, they trusted God and God brought them through. Joshua and Caleb was the only two surviving member from the who came out of the children under the age of 20 who went into the promised land and then we talk about david a man of courage who god gave courage who had courage who loved god and god used him courageously to fight against for how god gave shadrach and the meshach and abednego courage even though they were told not to they were told not to to bow. They were told to bow before the, the graven image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up and they had refused to bow and they were supposedly to be cast in the midst of the burning fire furnace. But we see how God delivered them out of the burning fire furnace. Also we talk about Daniel who was told to make that no man was to make any petition except to the king for 30 days. And Daniel said, I will talk to my God. So Daniel prayed as usual, calling upon God. And we see how when he was cast in the lion's den, that the lions could not touch him because God sent his angels to lock the mouths of the lion. 
So there his courage was seen and he was promoted at the end. And last week we spoke about Samson and how he was courageous to fight against the Philistine and how God gave him strength to slew a lion and also he slew 1,000 Philistine with the jawbone of an ass. He was a courageous man, though we know his end. He, um, he died with his enemies. God gave him strength to push down that temple where they were, where, where they were and all the Philistine died. Samson also died because he gave away the secret of his power and he was betrayed by Delilah. Now, we, after going through all those men, prophets, patriots of God, who God gave power through their faith, through their courage, we want to look at this man. Who would we think of would be the most courageous man who has ever lived? So, be of good courage. We want to talk about the most courageous man who has ever lived. That man is Jesus. That man is Jesus. So we want to look at what Jesus was, what did he do, how did he show courage, and how he overcame through courage courage he's there he's our captain he's our general he's our superintendent he is our king he is our supreme leader jesus and he was a proper proper example of courage how to be courageous so we want to look at jesus now looking back from the beginning of time he even before time began and we're looking back and we turn our mind into into the heaven and how it was in heaven before god created adam and eve there was there was jesus who was above all and there was the angels and there was one angel whose name was Lucifer. And he was he wanted to exalt himself. He said, I will exalt myself above the heavens. He wanted to exalt himself above God, above Jesus. He wanted to do that. And so because he was being rebellious. He was cast out, down to the earth. He was cast out of heaven. And he fell with one third of the angels, went with him down to the earth. Now, God wanted to extend heaven. So he created the earth. And when he created the earth, he knew that somebody had to be there, so he created man in his own image. So how man look? God, man is in the image of God. When God created man, put man on the earth, man, God, God told Adam, every tree, every fruit in the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. And the devil knew the commandments. And seeing him, him being on the earth, he had nothing to do but to try to disrupt the will of God. So, we know the story how he tempted Eve and Eve fought for his temptation did eat of the fruit that God commanded Adam not to eat and gave it to Adam Adam did eat and so there goes the beginning of trouble 
upon the earth. There goes the beginning of all sort of chaos upon the earth. There goes the beginning of what we are seeing today. Wars and rumors of wars. Pestilence. Diver places. There goes the beginning of hell upon the earth. Of all the killings, all the drugs, all the ungodly stuff. There goes in the garden. In here. There's a start. All started in Adam's disobedience. And God knew that this would be. He knew. There's nothing that God did not know. He knew that Adam would have been tempted and Adam would fall by his temptation. It wasn't his will, but he knew. And so he had made a preparation that he would have to save mankind. Because of Adam disobedient, it brought death upon the entire upon the entire earth. Every man that liveth from Adam, death was pronounced upon them. Man was not made to die. When God created man, he did not create man to die. Man was created to live forever. Death comes in because of disobedience. And continually there was disobedience after disobedience after disobedience. Disobedience spread like wildfire. And they, I mean, if you look at it today, <laughs> nobody wants to obey nothing that God says. The world is gone off course. The world is going like a train without brakes. So, and just to, to, to show where we are coming from and what made Jesus most courageous of all. Because there was nothing could be done to save mankind from eternal damnation. There was nothing that could be done. It was only God himself. As I said, this world from the disobedient of Adam, this, this world has been like a train without brakes. It's only God Almighty could put his foot on that brakes and give us a chance to get off the train before it tricks. Because this world is like a train going for to be wrecked because there's no brakes. But God made a promise. He said to Eve that thy seed shall bruise the head of the serpent, but the serpent's seed shall bruise, but the serpent shall bruise thy heel. So the seed of Eve was manifested in Jesus. I want to repeat that. The seed of Eve that God pronounced that the seed of Eve would bruise the head of the serpent was manifested in Jesus. Who was Jesus? Jesus was God himself who was incarnated in the flesh. Jesus is God incarnated in the flesh. Because we, man is made in the image of God, so it is not too hard for God to come down in his own image, in a fleshly form. And so we know the story how Jesus was born and how the angels told Mary that she will have a son. And his son shall be named Jesus. Her son shall be named Jesus. And it was the Spirit of God that overshadowed Mary. And Mary became with child. So Mary, the, the father of Jesus, was God himself. And that's why Jesus always referred to God as his father. Now, we want to look at what Jesus, why Jesus came to earth. Jesus came to earth for no other reason but to save us from sin. 
and he knew by saving uh, it required a sacrifice without the Bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission Jesus knew that his blood had to be shed to remit the sin of the world His blood had to be shed to remit the sins of the world. Jesus knew it. And so that time would come and he knew that that time would come. He began his ministry. He called 12 disciples, one of them that betrayed him. But he told them that he was will be put to death but he will raise on the third day he said i i will the son of man will be put to death will be crucified but will rise up on the third day i want to look at some scripture and look at why jesus was the most courageous man ever walked on the earth we want to look at his the day before he was crucified the day before he was taken into uh, judgment the day when he, before when he was before he was arrested and long does time what happened i'm going to read from matthew chapter 26 from verse 1 to 16 it says and it came to pass when jesus had finished it matthew 26 verse 1 and it came to pass when jesus finished these sayings he said unto his disciples, He know that after two days in the feast of the Passover, the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the place, palace of the high priest, whom they call Seopas, and consulted that they may take Jesus by subtlety and kill him that they but they say not on the feast day lest there be an uproar among the people and when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper there came unto him a woman having a alabaster box of oil of very precious ointment and pour upon his head as he sat at meat but when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, What purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For, he has wrought, for she has wrought a good work upon me. For ye have poor, ye have the poor always with you but me he not have always for in that she had poured his this ointment on his body she did it for my burial verily i say unto you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world there shall also this that the woman has done be told for a memorial unto her so it was just at the Passover, finish, and they assembled together. He said, then you finish these sayings. His disciples, with disciples, he said, no, he, after two days, Jesus knew that he would be, he would be crucified. He knew he would be crucified. Even before this time, he knew and he told his disciples. Now, crucifixion, if you just imagine what it is, imagine what it would be like to be crucified. Imagine what it would be like to know. And then the fact is that he hadn't done a crime, he hasn't done any crime. And yet he knew that he was going to be crucified. He told them, he said, you know that after two days, the feast is... In the feast of the Passover, the Son of Man shall be betrayed and be crucified. So he knew 
very well that he would be crucified. And he knew what would happen when he would be crucified. And he know, knew who would also betray him. But he was steadfast to do the will of his father. And it says, when he came to the house of Simon, the leper, that woman came with an alabaster box of ointment and poured upon his head as he sat at meat. The disciples saw it and was in indignation. They thought, this is so expensive. Why waste all this precious ointment on the master? And Jesus stood and the Jesus understood what they were saying and said, Why trouble ye this woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. For he have, poor, he have the poor with you always, but me he have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wherever this gospel is preached, the whole world, there shall also that this woman done be said as a memorial unto her. So, to be courageous is to know is to be able to overcome fear in adversities. To be courageous means that even in a situation that is dangerous and scary, you are still willing to face it. In the situation that Jesus was in, it was a dangerous situation, a fearsome situation, but he was not, he was willing to face it. He was willing to face it because he knew that is the will of God. And in verse 14 it says, Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed him, went to the high priest and said unto them, What will he give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they converted, converted with him for covenant with him for 30 pieces of silver and from that time he sought opportunity to betray him Jesus knew Judas would betray him but yet he kept him he allowed him to follow him he allowed him to have supper with him because on the feast he had supper with his disciples Judas was also among them. But Judas loved all his disciples. But there was one who was willing to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And that was Judas. But in verse 17 of Matthew chapter 26. In the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, his disciples came to Jesus. Where, thou, where have thou prepared the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city, such a man, and say unto him, The Master, time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thy house. Jesus knew about his last meal with his disciples. He knew everything was coming up to his death, to him being betrayed. And he knew it. And he was not afraid to face death. Because he knew that he had power over death. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is life itself and you can't kill life he 
in verse 13 it says when they had sung a hymn they went into the Mount of Olives and Jesus said unto them all ye shall be offended of me this night for it is written I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad but after I am risen, after I am risen I will go before thee in Galilee it's only God could do that there was no man on earth who could see their death, actually see their death and see their resurrection from the dead. He could actually see his death upon the cross and he could also see himself raising from the dead in three days. No other man, this had to be God himself. He said, no man take my life from me. I give it up. No man took Jesus' life. Jesus gave his life. Jesus came to die. That was the purpose of Jesus coming to die. And he knew that he came, left his rainbow circle thrown all the beauty and grandeur of heaven he put it down incarnated into a man walk among us knew that he would be crucified and crucifixion is i think the most horrific death that you we can imagine to be crucified imagine having nails in your hands nails in your feet and you hanging there by the nails imagine how painful that must be and Jesus saw all this and knew all this was going to come to pass he knew that he would be taken to Pilate's judgment hall he knew that they would strip him naked knew, mocked him he knew but he was prepared to go the way and that took courage so there cannot be no greater courage than that jesus was the most courageous man who has ever walked upon this earth and peter said unto jesus though all men shall offend because of thee Yet I will yet will I never be offended. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, three times. Peter said, Though I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. Likewise said all the others. How his disciples loved him. Imagine having the Lord, the Almighty God, with you, walking, talking with you. Imagine the comfort that you have when Jesus is near, when Jesus is with you. And so the disciples, they loved him. They had such a great love for him. Peter said, I will die for you. And he meant it. He really meant it. Because at the end, he died. He died for Jesus. And that even show how courageous all his disciples, all the 11 disciples, they all died for Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? that they will, could reciprocate the love that God had for them. They could show the love that they had for the Lord, that they were willing to die. So God, Jesus gave them, through the courage of Jesus, they received courage. Through what Jesus did, to give up his life, they 
they received courage and they were all able to sacrifice their life for Jesus. And um, going on in verse 36, then came Jesus. I want to read this part from St. Luke. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's Luke chapter 22 and verse 44. It says, And be no, and verse 43 says, They appeared unto him while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is where he was arrested. Verse 30, Luke 22, verse 43 says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthened him. You see, he was the Son of God. He was God in the flesh. But the angels from heaven. An angel came from heaven and strengthened him because of what he had to go through, what he was to go through. And it says, verse 44, and being in agony, imagine that Jesus, our Lord, the day, the night he was arrested, it says, being in agony, imagine he prayed earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood, hallelujah, falling down to the ground. How it is that he felt what he was going through was so awful. How what he had to go through, the fallen, when he had to go through the judgment when they brought him before Pilate in the judgment hall, he saw what he had to go through, the shame, what they had to go through, what he had to go through. They put a crown on So he knew what was to happen to him and he knew what he, was, what he had to go through. So while he prayed, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he earnestly prayed to God. And he said, he prayed three times. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And so he took with him Peter, the two sons of Germany, Zedebee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry here while we tarry here, ye here, watch with me. And he went a little further, fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came it again unto his disciples and finding them asleep. And said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may pass, not pass, away from me, except I drink it, let thy will be done. So Jesus, of course, would have preferred not to go through what he went through, but he knew he had to, to fulfill all things, to fulfill the prophecies, to fulfill the will of God. 
it's not easy. It was not an easy thing for him to say, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. I don't know if we can really imagine if we are really, really sorrowful. I mean, we know what sorrow is because many of us may have loved may have lost our loved ones and we know the pain of losing a loved one we have gone to situation when we feel so sorrowful but this was the epic of being sorrowful seeing yourself being crucified he could actually see himself being crucified being mocked being jeered be spat upon putting a crown of thorns all those disrespect he did for us we should just love him so much we should just love jesus so much for what he has done what would be our faith what would be our faith if jesus did not do what he did his courage covered the whole world his courage covered the sin of the whole world. The courage of Jesus covers every sin since Adam. Covered it. And all men has to do is accept him for what he has done. Repent, believe and repent and follow him. That's all he asks us to do he said my father if this cup could pass from me away from me except I drink it thy will be done so thy will thy will O Lord let thy will be done and so we are followers of Christ and God Jesus expects us to be courageous in everything he showed us what courage is. How he went to the death on the cross. He went. He submitted himself for us. There was a purpose for us to have salvation. For us to deliver from the sin of this world. For us to be free. For us to be in adopted in the family of God for us to replay, to come back to the place where Adam fell to take us back to Eden before the fall of man that's what he did it took a lot of courage to take on principalities and powers but he knew that he had more power His, he had more power than death he knew that Death could not overcome him. And so his courage took him beyond death. The courage, Jesus' courage took him beyond death to the resurrection of the dead. That he could raise himself up after he died. He could lift himself out of the hands of death. He could break the fetters of death. Death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. There was nothing could hold him because of his courage. Be of good courage. He overcame death and became the first of the resurrection of the Spirit. And it says, and he came, he prayed the third time. He came and pray the third time and for his eyes found them asleep again so Jesus prayed three times and he left them and went and prayed the third time yes saying the same word oh my father if this cup should pass away from me except I drink it which cup the cup of his death, the cup of him being 
mocked and stewed the cup of him being on the cross. O oh Lord, thy will be done. After the third time he came back and saw them asleep again. He said, Sleep on now, take thy rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed unto the hands of sinner. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that betrayed us. Doesn't but that betray me. And while he yet spake low, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him a great multitude. So how many people came to arrest Jesus? Judas, one of the twelve, came with him a great multitude with sword and staffs. How many did they need? A great multitude came. And from the and from the high priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whosoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Hold fast unto him. But if we think about this part of the scripture, they all this priests, the elders of the people, they all knew Jesus. They all knew Jesus. Jesus moved among them. But G Judas is giving them a sign. Whosoever shall kiss the same, hold fast unto him. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And then they came and laid hand on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them that were with Jesus stretched forth his hand, drew his sword, and struck a servant of the high priest and smooth off his ear cut off his ear and Jesus said unto him put up again thy sword into this place for they that take the sword shall perish with the sword hear what Jesus says here after Thinkest not, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, hallelujah, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legion of angels. Thinkest not thou what Jesus is saying, I could pray to the, my Father. And presently you send me twelve legions of angels. But he says, But how shall the scripture be fulfilled? That thus it must be. It was prophesied in the prophets that he would die, that he would be crucified. It was all in the prophecy. Prophecy had to be fulfilled. We see when we see now what's going on around the world, the wars and rumors of wars, it was foretold us. Jesus told us about this. The apostles, the disciples told us about this, what we have seen. The scripture must be fulfilled. And Jesus said, to the men that came, are he come out as against a thief with a sword and with staff to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and he laid no hands all of me. So it shows us that the time 
when the time come, he had to be betrayed. This, this priest, them that came to take him, knew him very well. He said he sat in the temple teaching daily. Why did it take Judas to betray him when they knew him? But also, that is to be fulfilled, that the scriptures of the prophet may be fulfilled. They did not need Judas to show them who Jesus was. But the scripture must be fulfilled because it said he would be betrayed. He would be betrayed. And so they knew him. But they need a betrayer. The scripture requires that there must be one to betray him. And he said, and it, it says all, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all his disciples forsook him and fled. All his disciples forsook him and fled. Because they knew what would hit the master. The Bible says they will catch the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And when there's no shepherd, the, sh the sheep scattered. So we see what a great thing that Jesus did in that he came down to earth to die for us, to redeem us from destruction, from death. Because, you know, because of what Jesus done, we don't have to fear death anymore. Death has no victory over the blood-bought one. Death has no victory over a child of God. Before death reigns, but Jesus by his resurrection has taken away the sting. The Bible says, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? So praise God. Jesus was truly the most courageous man who has ever walked upon the earth. And we give him thanks and we give him praise for what he has done for the redemption of the soul, for the promise of a re better resurrection, for the hope of a better life that he has given us. Jesus the most courageous. God bless you, my brethren. I will stop here. And um, this will be the closing of our topic on courage. And I just want us to be know that we don't need to be fearful at all when we put our trust in Jesus. We don't need to be fear of anything because when Jesus conquered death and conquered the grave, there was nothing else left for him to conquer. So he has done it all for us. Songwriter says, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. His, wash, his blood washes whiter than snow. Amen. So I will close there. God bless you. God bless you all for joining us. And um, praise the name of the Lord. Um, praise the name of the Lord. God bless you all for joining us. And um, let's be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword which is the word of God, the shield, which is faith. Wear the whole armor, and the devil will not harm us. God bless you. I'm going to close there. 
I'm going to close with prayer. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I bless your holy name. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for the courage that you showed us. Help us to be courageous. Oh God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Be with us, Lord. Guide and protect us. Let your spirit dwell with us and lead us unto everlasting. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, my brethren. God bless you all. Have a great day.